There are five things that determine the economic job creation, health care for each citizen in an area, and education. Those five key elements that you find in every government leader in the world gets it. It starts with education, K through 12, and university systems. It's about infrastructure, and I'm really talking broadband. It is about the ability to be innovative, catch market transitions. But as in the Business Week article said very well this weekend, if you can't execute and scale, innovation only gets you part way there. It is about supportive government on a city, a community, a state, and a national basis. And something I didn't understand when I came to Silicon Valley, it's about how these all work together. It is a unique spot in the world. And I've had the honor to visit most every country in the world, many of the leaders. Everyone looks to what we do uniquely in Silicon Valley. The ability that Silly Silicon Valley Education Foundation has to really make a difference. To when I asked Van Dang, I said, why are you involved in this? And I appreciate you giving back. She said, John, first of all, I'm involved because you asked me. I said, good answer. <laughs> but then she said, this is a group that literally is able to connect and collaborate across 34 school districts. To be able to speak as one group of teachers and unions and business and the citizens all pouring toward a common goal that the equalizer in life is education. And it's a group that especially focuses on the under or underserved. And she said, John, we can make a difference. Very often people ask, why don't you give more, or why don't you get involved? The first answer is often people don't ask that you respect. All of us in this room are asking each other to continue to stay involved and give, and I understand how tough it is now, but we're also asking you to ask that of your friends and others. The second reason people don't give is they don't think they'll make a difference. And if there was one takeaway from tonight, watch the young people who came up here and see the difference that they make. I also took a couple notes. I saw one lawyer, one salesperson, one engineer, and we'll talk about that later for Cisco. <laughs> but it is the ability, when you give a person an education, that's something you can never take away from them in life. And my parents early on, who were both doctors, taught me that the equalizer in life was education. The second equalizer, however, is technology, how you do that. I come from a state of West Virginia. It was one of the top states in terms of income, education, et cetera in the United States, and yet we led our education system and underestimated the importance of how employees and business all work together toward a common goal. And once you lose something, often you don't realize what you have until you try to get it back. Last week, I had the honor of being in Massachusetts. I came from Wang Laboratories. Route 128 is the Silicon Valley of the East, make no mistake about it. You know, Deck was there, Wang was there, Data General, a whole host of high-tech companies. And today, it's, it's dominated by just three or four players. We met with Governor DeVol Patrick. We met with the top five universities in the area, Harvard, uh, MIT, with their presidents. We met with four people from the business community and the education group. And the objective was very simple. How does that geography get its magic back? regarding high tech. You have a governor who believes, local community who believes, but because in the Massachusetts area we let that get away from us, it's something that is very difficult and takes literally groups working together that never work together to accomplish it, to bring it back. Silicon Valley isn't just an area that we give back. It's a area that knows how to dream together. And more importantly than dreams, we know how to make dreams come true. We may not always agree on issues, and I think that's part of the great thing about our country, but we are able to say one thing we do agree on is a great education for every person in this country. And we have to realize our education system is in trouble. We're not preparing our students to have the standard of living that we had, and we've got to say how do we work together across groups, not with just making incremental difference, but have the courage to take innovation and do what we do best. We know how to innovate, we know how to scale, and we know how to replicate. And I want to challenge us, not to just say let's feel like we're making a difference and be proud as we should of the accomplishments we saw tonight, but to say let's do what Silicon Valley does best, let's dream in terms of what's capable. 
Silicon Valley Education Foundation. It is unique. You know, and with the with the foundation of many of the groups working on families that have been here before, toward a common goal, and individuals who are fortunate enough to migrate here from within our country and outside our country to make a difference. But I'm going to challenge this. I think we can make a lot more difference. Very often, you say, well, corporate social responsibility, that's very important. But during tough times, without meaning to, we take a step back from that. And I want to just challenge us that corporate social responsibility is what makes a difference. I understood the concept coming from the East Coast, but it wasn't until I came out here and with a company at that time of about 400 people and 70 million in sales, I called up Lou Platt from HP. He and four of his top executives, including Wim Rollins, I don't know Wim if you remember it, met with a young startup for two years. And they met almost every quarter with us. And I never asked them why they did it, because boy, the vice was amazing. I was afraid if I asked, they, they'd stop. And finally, after two years, I said, why did you do this? Because by that time, we were on a roll. We were headed into pretty good territory. And Lou looked at me, and he said, John, it's the Silicon Valley way. I didn't entirely understand that. So I asked the following question. I said to Lou and Wim, what can I do to give back to HP to make a difference? And they looked right in the eye of our management team, and they said, do this for the next generation to give back. That's just what is makes this valley great. It is the ability to do this in scale. And so as we think about our challenges for this next year, let's think about how we do it in scale. Cisco, when we do network academies, we have 2.8 million students in those on a global basis in 162 countries. In the Valley area, we have 3,644 students in the program. In 36 different network academies, and 31,000 students have been in the program. What we can do together is to say, how do we dream and how do we scale? And for people that have doubts, is this important? It is so important to the employees of the companies that we represent. We've been honored to be in the top 10 places to work in every country in the world, every major country in the world. We have won many of the Corporate Social Responsibility Awards. But the correlation between financial success and corporate social responsibility is one to one. And it was an honor to be, as, as one of the speakers said earlier, to join the Dow and represent Silicon Valley as the first high tech company in a decade to be part of that. On the other side, it, it was sad because GM is a wonderful company. It's not just an American icon, it's a global icon. And it was literally, as the Wall Street Journal said at one point in time, it was the Toyota, it was the Ford, it was the Chrysler, it was the Apple, it was the Microsoft all rolled into one. And one of the key takeaways from that comment is we must all learn how we continue to improve. How as company and organizations, if we don't make the tough decisions, even though we're successful today, we will get left behind. If we don't make the tough decisions that if we don't fix the education system first here locally and then on a national basis, this country, this valley will get left behind. So tonight, I really want to first say how honored we are as a company. I'd like for the Cisco family who's in this room to please stand up. And this is what we're about. I think there's 50 of us. Please stand up, Cisco family. I'd like to tell you they're here to say nice things about the leader, but once you know our culture, you know that's not the case. They're here because they believe and that together we can change the world. But we have to start local. We have to have the courage not to make incremental steps, but to dream what is possible. And so tonight, on, on behalf of all of us here in Silicon Valley, whether we're teachers who give every day back to the community, superintendents within the area, in, members of the local government, state government or national government. We've got to think more out of box, to take what we're best at here in Silicon Valley, which is innovation, but understand innovation without operational excellence just doesn't get it done. So I'm gonna challenge us to do both. I wanna thank you for taking an evening of your time this evening. It's an honor to be part of Silicon Valley and part of the future of this area, but it's also an honor and an obligation that the most successful must give back and say, how do we change this together? So on behalf of the Cisco family, thank you very much.